Hello and how are you? My name is Mohin Mbar and I welcome you to our 20th lecture of creating a complete inventory management system. So we have so far achieved two milestones. First one is creating a complete dashboard uh, of an inventory management system that is functioning. And then the second milestone is uh, to create an API, a complete API that is dynamic and powerful that even supports image uploading. There are two main milestones. So the next milestone is how we deploy this project on internet. Let's say that you've been tasked to deploy this project on internet. How do you deploy uh, your project on internet? This is what we're going to achieve in this uh, lecture. So without wasting much time, let's go ahead and start our timer and start our today's business. All right. So. Let's get started. So this is our project. So what do we begin from? So this is inverter track. This is our project. So make sure that it is uh, well updated. So you go ahead and push it on GitHub. Okay, push it on GitHub. So I'm just showing you the most effective way of how you deploy projects. You push it on GitHub and then you go to your dashboard or your cPanel and then you pull. Okay, so this is very, very powerful compared to what? To the where how we do it uh without what without by i mean to the it is very powerful compared to the way how we used to do it that with uh ftp all right so i'll go ahead and uh, make sure that my git my, my project is updated on github and will published on github so if it's not there please watch the video how we publish the project on github so if i click on uh, if i right click here and then i say view on github it should be able to take me uh to the github all right so the first thing that we're going to begin is the hosting where are you going to host your project okay so there are so many hostings in whatever country you are so if you're in uganda just simply search uh host how to i mean okay maybe buy hosting or can say buy web hosting in uganda so you can replace this word uganda with your own country okay if you're in gambia if you're in japan if you're in uh, bangladesh if wherever you are just say buy web hosting then put your web count in your country so once you do that uh this first uh, these first search results, they are what? They are international hostings, whereby you may need it, a card. So you can go ahead and use this one that are there. However, if you scroll down, you'll see now the web hosting in your respective country. For example, you see here, web hosting in Uganda. So if I open this one, I'll be able to see the web hosting that are in my particular country. So if you say in Gambia, if you say in Cameroon, if you say in Kenya, you'll be able to see them. So after... You can go ahead and put there your order by just simply putting there the domain that you want and then search so the orders of placing an a host a a, a a web hosting is they are very very straightforward for example for here i'll just simply come here and say web hosting and it may look the, the steps may look different but they are similar and then say get started and then after clicking get started i believe they'll get me so i choose here my package so it should be in your currency or in whatever country that you want. So for example, if I want this one, so this is my one GB hosting. And then so according to the money that I will afford, so I can go ahead and say order. So when I say order, they'll put a place where I can put my name, my email, and then my phone numbers and the message. And then I send. So when I send, they'll receive this order. So once they receive the order, they will either call me. So if I cannot wait, I can as well call them on these phone numbers. I say, hey guys, I want hosting and I've, uh, I have uh, say, I've, I've submitted my order. After doing that, uh, they will say, okay, you pay us. So you'll pay them in whatever means. So since it is in need within your country, you may not even need the card. You can send them the money through the mobile, uh, mobile banking, like uh, using the mobile money here in Uganda, call it mobile money. In Kenya, they use M-Pesa or in whatever country that you're in. You go ahead and send them the money. So once they you send them the money, 
they will give you they will create for you a hosting with your domain and then they give you the what they give you the logins that you log in and access your cpanel so these things may look different okay they may look different but the end results after you have paid whatever hosting that you've chose the money they'll give you what you call the cpano logins so in that cpano it is where everything is going to look the same and the steps are going to look the same so you can use your country based hosting you can use even the international hosting if you have uh what if you have like a visa card or a mastercard so you go ahead and purchase the hosting it is really simple step you'll see here this is called the 2g this one that has like extension of your country this is called webstar.ug this one is called jubilee host this is also uganda based so in whatever country that you are you can begin with the local hosting of your own country and then when they give you the domain and they after you've paid they'll give you the domain and they look at the cpano everything that you access of course i mean will be like in public in whatever country you will be able to get your what your system so for me i always use uh like uh, i'm i'm comfortable with the uh, hosting that i always use it's called hosting bangladesh they have a very stable uh hosting services i've used them for like four years i have never regretted it's like five years more than five years i've never regretted so they have very good services so you can as well use this okay just come here and then you pay them through by using a card if you're not in this country called bangladesh so it's what i use because i started from this country so i i discovered them and they really uh, offer very good services it's what i use and uh, this is their hosting so so after you've come to this hosting or whatever hosting that you chose after you've purchased so make sure that you pause the video and follow the steps please go ahead and purchase by following the steps that i've clearly explained and then they'll give you the logins okay so i'll come here and log in for example me i've already purchased here so even if you use this one the steps are just the same you put there your domain and then go ahead and purchase so for me i've already purchased on this particular hosting and this is where i log in from so i'll go ahead and log in my and, and place in my login information so i assume that right now you paused the video you went through the purchasing you called those guys on their phone numbers and then they, they you you paid them they created for your domain and hosting and they have sent you the logins so i hope this is the point where you are or oh, i hope at this moment you already know everything about hosting and uh, you've you already have even the logins you have maybe be some hosting that you're going to use for testing so after i'll go ahead and log in for my case so please go ahead and also log in okay so the interface may look the same but as i told you our end point is going to be what called the c panel so i'll go ahead and click on services this is my services and then this is one of my service that i hold with these guys so i'm going to click here to log into c panel okay so this is where the whole story starts from so whatever hosting that you purchase with they should give you the logins for this place okay of the logins of an interface that is going to look like this one so now you'll have to ask yourself why have i purchased this hosting have i purchased this mainly for this project or this is just a a hosting that i'm going to use maybe for multiple projects so for example me my main domain is huge news 24 this is my news blog website so this is not the main purpose for the hosting so what i'm going to do but i'm going to use this one to demonstrate or to add this project on this particular hosting so what i'm going to do i'm going to create something called subdomain so the subdomain will help me the subdomain will help me to treat my project like a separate project on this particular hosting so that is the step that i'm going to begin with however if you not if you've purposely purchased this hosting for this project then you don't need to do it to do the step that i'm going to do of creating a subdomain so let me create a subdomain so according to this interface to create a subdomain you just come here to where there is domains and then click on what domains here in this section of domains click on domains 
So when you do that, uh, these are different subdomains that I always use. So I'm going to create a domain called inverted track a subdomain. I mean, so I'll come here to say create new, and then I'm going to create a subdomain called inverted track. So I'll put here inver inverted track like this inverted track. If you want, you can put a dash if you want. So for me, I can just name it as one thing like this inverted track. And then I put dot, and then I put my main domain dot ug news 24 dot info that is my what my inventory management system so i mean the subdomain where i'm going to be hosting my inventory management system so after doing that the next thing that i'm going to do i'm going to create for it a folder in my storage so i'll come here and just put inverter track or i can just leave it as it is there okay so let me just keep it inverter track or let me just leave it the way it is here so they're going to create for me a folder called inverter track dot ug okay in my project i mean in my in my file directory then i'll go ahead and say submit so when i say submit it's going to process and create for me a special folder called inverter track so this subdomain is going to be pointing in this folder so it can take a minute to process so this subdomain is going to be pointing in this folder okay so i'll wait for it to do what to process it can take one minute or more because it is going to register this one like on international hosting so if you if you you purposely purchased this uh for the for the inventory management system then you may need you don't need to create a subdomain so it's staying longer on why so as it is taking long, so the next thing that we're going to do, we are going to to make our project a public, temporarily public. Saying long, I didn't expect it to take this long. All right, okay. So as it is processing, let me put this tab here. I'm going to go to our project. So how do I go to our project? I just simply come here to GitHub and say View Project on Git. Okay. So it will take me straight to the what? To where the project is. Okay, this guy is still creating. Okay, this is where the project is. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this project to be public uh, for, for so that I can be able to clone it to my hosting. Um, let's do that. So let me first come here to Visual Studio Code. Open Visual Studio, oh, sorry. Open uh, view this project in Visual Studio Code. Yeah, and then come to this dot git git ignore git ignore git ignore git ignore this git ignore i'm going to remove everything here i'm going to remove everything maybe you can only leave dot okay let's remove everything make sure that this git ignore it does not have anything okay uh if you're going to use a cpanel so that you can be able to push even our vendor files so remove everything in git ignore then come here and commit maybe Say removed git ignore commit that and then go ahead and push okay so this is going to make sure that it's pushing everything even the storage and everything is going to be pushed on what online so do that remove everything in git ignore and then push afresh so it can take a minute to push because it is pushing even the vendor files okay so if you're using uh shared hosting you don't need to everything in git ignore should be removed here in this git ignore all right so after doing that now let's go ahead and refresh our repository so i hope you're following the steps so you can see our subdomain has been created successfully so as this one is pushing, as it is pushing, let's uh, see what is going on here in subdomain. So you can see our subdomain has been created. So you can come and search inverted track. You see, it is here. It has been created. So after it being created, the next thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to check what is going on. Okay. So I can just simply come here back to cPanel. Okay. 
cPanel and then come to uh, file manager here file manager so when you come to file manager here you should be able to see the directory so come here to us in Uganda then I come here to I can search inverter track this one here can you see inverter track it is here so this is the place where our project is going to we are going to place our project so if you have purposely purchased this hosting for your for your project then you just need to add it here in public html here this will add it all right so what i'm going to do i'm going to come here to inverter track this one here inverter track and i try to test so i can just simply come here and add a file called index.html okay and then i come and right click on it to say edit maybe i come here and put i come here and put so it is loading i come here to, to welcome to inverter track so i save now if i come to our subdomain so our this is our subdomain inverter track dot ug dot ug news for dot info so when i click on this one i should be able to see welcome to inverter track can you see so it means that now this one is public and international everyone can be able to see it all right so if your hosting provide ssl so you can just simply come here and say ssl if you provide hosting provide ssl just go ahead and click on ssl status here ssl status and go ahead and update your ssl ah, this this one can take a minute eh? pushing these vendor files it can really take some time all right so come here here in ssl status and search for inverter track however these things are optional so i can just come here and say i select the inverter track email and the uh, okay ww and also without ww and say run auto install so this one is going to install their ssl in our project i mean in this inventory so this one is by provided by hosting Bangladesh. not every hosting will give you this that's why i recommend this hosting so if i come back so i'm just doing this because this one is still pushing our vendor files okay it can take a minute for sure so if i come back come back to our our domain subdomain and then try to search inverter track you'll see that okay the ssl are still being installed but we'll be able to force ssl's redirection from here all right so our inventory is still pushing <laughs> it's still pushing no problem all right so after doing that uh the next thing that we're going to do we are going now to clone so at, as it is pushing hopefully when it finishes it will be able to clone the vendors but i'm not really sure that will be do so uh maybe let us pause for like five minutes and wait for it to push i see it is having uh how many mbs i don't know what's making it heavy the vendor files let's just wait for it to push let me just pause the video as we wait for it to push okay it has finished pushing and it has finished pushing successfully that is so beautiful to see that it has finished pushing okay so make sure that you also wait and make sure that you make sure that it pushes that's the whole point make sure that it pushes after you remove the vendor so now after doing that now the next thing that you're going to do uh we are now going to clone our github repository on our cpanel or into our cpanel okay so i'll just simply right click here and save you git on github so this is the repository we're going to clone it on the cpanel so the whole point will be we'll be making the changes we push them on github and then we go on cpanel and then we pull them that is how we shall be deploying the changes all right so let's go ahead and do that so i'll first come here to our project and make it public okay so come here to settings and then come here to to visibility and make it public okay 
so i'll make sure that it's public so i'll change it and make this repository public so i can be able to clone it so i finished making it public so I'm making it public the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to copy the link of this uh, repository so maybe you can just be making it public when you're about to push when after after pulling you make it private if you want to protect your project so i'll go ahead and copy the in the what the the what i'll go ahead and copy the project link without the word settings eh? just the project link the repository link after copying it i'll come to my c panel okay so we have finished creating the subdomain if you mainly created this domain for purposely for for this project then you don't need to create a subdomain so after doing that then go ahead and click on what on git uh, version control so after clicking on git version control the next thing that you're going to do you're going to go ahead and clone the project okay so click on create okay so this is the place you're going to clone the project so to clone the project to own your cpanel okay let me come again you come and click on git version control and then click on new okay i'll create so go ahead and paste here the link where your project is okay after you've made it public and then come here and put the link where your project is going to be deployed so there are two scenarios well first scenario if you're going to deploy this project on the main domain then go ahead and put public html this one public underscore html second scenario if you're going to put on subdomain then go ahead and put here the subdomain folder remember we said our subdomain folder is this one inventor track dot dot info likewise to yours so i'm going to go ahead and put it in inveto track dot info this one here okay so i go ahead and give this report to make sure that you put in the right subdomain folder i'll go ahead and put it in and create the what the name of the repository how i should be referencing to it which is inveto track web so those are the settings that you need to do when you're cloning the repository then after i go ahead and say clone so you'll get a warning they say that this folder already contains some files so when you're cloning something you have to make sure that there is no any file in that folder so you're going to delete everything in this folder in this subdomain folder and then we clone it so i'll open a new tab and then come here to the folder then come to settings and make sure that everything is, is not hidden so click here and click here okay and then then save then come to the folder which is inventor track for my case this one here and then go ahead and select everything in that folder and then delete it just say delete okay so the directory is empty then come back here and then clone it so it will show you that has cloned successfully uh so you'll have to wait so here it is so it is still cloning so clone is complete and then you can see if you come here and search inventor track you'll see that this is your project it has been cloned successfully so after doing that after doing that there are other things that you have to do to make sure that the project is running so after doing that uh, it means that next time we want to make make changes we just simply come here to manage and then say pull changes okay say update then it will be pulling so if i click on update it has the latest update so you just push on github then come here and send update from remote it will go ahead and, and pull or and update all right so after doing that now the next thing you're going to do you are going to create now um you're going to make this remember our project was la was was running on uh, local php artisan so now since that is online we are going to go ahead and uh, and do it and uh, add a htt access file to make it ra run like a, a php artisan project so let me show how it is done so i'll come here to our project so if i click here on inventor track you should now see that uh, the project it is having uh, the files so after clicking there come and right click on this right click on this HTT access if it is not there dot HTT access dot 
HTT access. If it is not there, go ahead and create this file here in the top folder. Okay, remember, you have already said that you should not hide any file here under settings. So if it is not there, click there and then go ahead and create that file here. And call it dot HTT access exactly as how I've written it here. You get it? So for me, it's already there, so I'm just going to edit. Right click and say edit. So this is our .htt access, okay? So come here and search, and search Laravel .htt access, okay? You'll see some search results, okay? So come here and click on first search result for Stack Overflow, and then look for the answer. I don't know now which one is correct answer. <laughs> Let me try this one with 39 votes, okay? I hope this one. If it fails, you try another one. But I believe it is this one, okay? So I'll copy it. Copy the way it is here. Copy this one. And then come here to edit while you're editing. And paste there. I think it's that one. Okay? And paste there. Okay? After, save. So after doing that, now try to visit your, your what? Your project, Inverter Track. Okay, let's refresh. Bismillah. Ah, I can see there is a problem. Additionally, 404 was error encountered trying to add a document, handle request. Oh my god, what is this? So we had an error, so I'll start our timer. You can see our timer started. So in the previous lecture, you remember we had an error, so uh, the error came when we wanted to um, host our system online so in this video i'm going to explain to you how you can solve that error however it is not an error really it is just uh, a change in the structure of uh, laravel uh, laravel 10 so what i've been using before i've been using laravel 8 but uh, probably if you are creating your project right now you might be using laravel 10. so laravel 10 has a slight way how it changed its way of hosting or how you can host its website i mean website made by laravel admin i mean sorry by laravel so i'm going to show you how i've solved the error however if um if you did not face any challenge let's say maybe you're using laravel 8 or 9 uh, then the previous steps that had given you you must have not faced any challenge But if you faced any challenge, then uh, I'm going to show you how you can fix that challenge uh, step by step uh, However, it's not straightforward, but you can make sure that uh, it works like you have to make sure that it works Okay, so let me show you how I fixed my challenge So uh, the old Laravel the other old Laravel here on the public i mean on the main directory okay so first thing that you have to do is just to do like what i told you you have to, to go to the dot git ignore and remove the other files that are being ignored and then go ahead and push to your github so you have to do that then after doing that so previously laravel was uh having Can you mute? Alright. Um, I was saying that uh, previously Laravel in its home page, I mean in its main directory, they used to have a server.php. This file here. If you go to the old Laravel, like for example this project, in this file they used to have um, this file called server dot php so this server dot php is the file that would be executed when laravel uh, starts uh, when the laravel starts so what it does it just uh, go ahead and call the what the um, it just go ahead and imports the index dot php under um, under what under public okay in this public folder okay so right now uh, laravel admin got rid with that so they have literally no file there so what you do you have to put the other file by just simply coming here 
to your project just come to your project on top of it create this file called index.php you can create both of them you can call them you can call it index.php at the same time you can call it what you can call it uh, laravel okay then after um after doing that then um add these pieces of file so you can file this uh file anywhere online so let me just remove these things and i show you how you can add them or you can pause the video and go ahead and write these uh, lines okay you just go ahead and write these lines however you can go to your previous uh, laravel project and then go to this server okay go to the server.php the server.php file just copy uh, this piece of information okay just copy this one and add it to your what to your index.php file that you'll have created here so make ready to in the php file and then i go ahead and i added this so i can pause the video and then you put this one however these are these are just uh, optional okay so um this is optional you can as well remove this one let's just check if there is a, a maintenance if it is in maintenance mode okay so then go ahead and require this is the most important part just say require then put this directory and then say vendor and and say vendor auto load and then also go and say up and then require this bootstrap file and then also go ahead and say uh can equals to make kernel and then do it like this and then after then go ahead and say response equal to this one and then go ahead and import this one so you just post the video and do this however you can go ahead and search this on internet and just simply say laravel server okay server dot php file okay so if you just search this one you'll find it everywhere in what in uh in uh you see you'll find for example display this is deployment of PHP. By the way, this is the, these are the steps that you can follow to deploy your what your project. Okay, so here they'll give you this file that you'll have to do what to add. Okay, where is it? Okay, so this is the file. Okay, I've just searched this out with PHP. Just copy this. You may not even write what I've just told you. you just copy these pieces of file and then add this one in simple terms you just need these three lines okay only these only these files these lines are the one that you need then you add them in this file called server.php or you create two files one called server.php another one called index.php anything that you want so create those two files and then come and search laravel server.php and then come and copy these files okay so they are pub they're everywhere they are everywhere just search server server dot php laravel okay go ahead and search that one you'll find a lot of uh, solutions i mean a lot uh you'll find them in every, everywhere almost <laughs> everywhere just go ahead and copy uh that file okay can even find it here on stack overflow see it is here so you just copy this one and then add it to your what to your to the file that you have created or that i've just shown you you create it here or you can just post the video and write this one that i've just shown you all of them just possible you can as well just uh, write only these ones only so your project should be able to do what to work okay so after doing that so go ahead and create these two files you can create this one at the same time index.php and then you create another one called server.php and then put these same pieces of code so after doing that uh after doing that the next thing you're going to do you're going to now uh make sure that your your dot htt access file looks like this one okay make sure that dot, your dot htt access file looks like this one okay so you can pause the video i may not be able to explain this but you can pause the video and then go ahead and write these lines however you can find them also online you can find them online by just simply coming and search here laravel like i showed you in the previous lecture laravel.htt access so search this one you'll find them everywhere okay so go ahead and copy the .htt access file this one 
okay so you can copy the one with many votes maybe this one almost all of them they work <laughs> i've found them work if one doesn't work for you you try another one okay so maybe you can try this one i think this one that i'm using this one here so you copy this one and then add it in your what in your .htt access okay so to add it there in your .htt access so you can pause the video and copy this one but i recommend you to just copy the unknown internet so you put here right rule and then put here index.php okay so the two things that i've just told you to do uh then after doing that uh the next thing uh you're going to go ahead and go ahead and commit and push okay i say go ahead commit and push so if you're using visual studio code you can come here and say new changes or we'll put a comment and then push if you're using terminal it is okay push to github if you're using github um github what github using github software it is also okay go ahead and push okay so after pushing while you've put you while you've put um this piece of file and also uh dot htt access after you've put dot htt access access file and also this index file or server file or both of them with the same code go ahead and commit and push then after doing that then you go to cpanel Okay, go to your cpanel all right so this is our cpanel this is our cpanel then we're going to go and we're going to we're going to go to our what to our git okay you remember we cloned this yesterday or in the previous lecture or in this very lecture after we've cloned it then you go ahead and search inventor track or you go and search search for the project that you're using okay so we are using this one okay click on manage and then click on pull and deploy this one here then go ahead and say update from remote then it will go ahead and show you they're successful so sometime you might have changed something manually on the server let's say that uh, you had changed something manually and you've changed it also on localhost so this server I mean, um, let's say that you had manually modified the text access file. So if you pull, it will give you an error. So what you do, you may just come and rename it. Okay, just rename it. Come that file that is giving you an error. For example, me had changed here dot env and also the change dot ht access, and then I come and change them on localhost. So they gave me an error. So what I did, I just came and just rename them. Okay, so and pull afresh. So when you pull afresh, it has to show you that as pulled successfully okay so after pulling uh the next thing you're going to make sure that you're running uh php 8.1 okay php 8.1 okay so to make sure that you're running php 8.1 you just simply come to uh your php version controller okay php version controller then search for the project your project for example this is inventory track inventor track then select it and then you change the php to be 8.1 okay 8.2 was throwing an error so make sure it is 8.1 okay so after doing that go ahead and try and refresh your project okay so for me if i come i try to refresh my project my project is working you see this is the project is already online you can see uh, sorry no 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 this is the one online okay it's done online inventor track the tg this one and then if i come and refresh here you'll see that uh, it is already what it is already working all right so if you get an error about like hey they say that your composer does not support that php version yet you have already activated php for version 8.1 and then you get an error here that, that your php your composer does not support your current php version so what you do you come and search for php composer i mean just say search for ignore dependencies composer laravel okay ignore dependencies composer laravel then you come to stack overflow you'll need to run this command okay on your local host or you can even run 
yeah this command will work this one okay this first answer go ahead and run this command okay so or you can use this one okay so this command here composer install ignore platform rex this one eh? requirement like this so come to your terminal and run it so we are telling php to ignore the what the the the, the, the command the, the the platform in case it is not working in, with 8.1 so go ahead and run this this command in your terminal localhost this one here I hope you can see it. Uh, there are two. There are two. Let me show you the one that I ran. So there is this one. Just composer install composer. Let me show it to you here. Composer install composer install dash dash ignore dash platform dash rec equals to PHP. So you just run the, both of them. Both of them will work. Okay. So after doing that, what is going to do? It is going to make sure that. Uh, your PHP, I mean your. It's going to make sure that your 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 project does not uh, depend on uh, on what on the on the command. I mean on the platform, okay. So let me go ahead and commit again, and then push to GitHub. Then after pushing to GitHub, let's go to our project. I mean let's go to our hosting. Okay here okay and then we pull the update from github so you push to github and then you pull from this side on the server so it has successfully uh imported so what you do then you again come and try and refresh okay so come and try and refresh so after doing that uh i expect your project to be working at this moment but if it doesn't work <laughs> keep on searching for the errors and find uh, what could be causing that issue so after doing that the next thing we're going to set our what our project environment so go ahead and copy the link of this project and then come to your .im file okay so come to your project here click on this one to go to your project directly so this is your project folder then come to this dot right click on it and then edit so uh if you're using so go ahead and put here uh the what the http link so if you're having the other localhost link remove it and then put here the link of the internet of the browser i mean sorry the link that is already deployed the link that is online okay so go ahead and do that so after doing that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do, so you should make sure that at that point again your project is running, okay? So another thing that I would like to tell you is, uh, if your project is, if your project is deployed on the server that has .htt I mean, that has SSL, then you will need to put HTTPS. If your if your server or your hosting does not have SSL that are installed. Then just put HTTP without S. Okay, so that is very important. Okay. Now, after doing that, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going now to configure our database. Okay, we're going to configure our database to make sure that it is uh, having correct. I mean, to make sure that our project is connected to the what the database. So, how do you create the database online? Okay. So what you do. You come to your cPanel. Okay, come to the cPanel. Okay, let me come here. Come to the cPanel here. So then search for my SQL wizard. Okay, so come to my SQL. My SQL wizard. This one, okay. MySQL database wizard, okay. This one here. So this one wizard will help us to create the database and the database user at the same time. So go ahead and click on MySQL database wizard, and then create your database, okay.
okay so for me i've already created my database but okay we can create another one for just for the case of you for the case of testing so let's go ahead i can create another one so let's create the database for our project so i can call this one um inveto 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 track 2 okay so this is the name of our database so you go ahead and create the database so it will process and then it will show me the database has been created successfully after doing that the next thing that we're going to do is not create the database user who is going to be using this database so i can just simply put here uh, the database user that's the same name so i go ahead and put here the password for the database user for me i can just copy this one the same name here and they paste it here as the password for the database user however you can do something that is really uh, stronger than that that's going to be the database user then say create user so it will go ahead and create user so this is the user and this is the database so what we're going to do next is to give the privileges to this user just select all the privileges and then say make changes or just say next step like this so by doing like that you will have created the database user and the database itself and added the user to the database so now after doing that the next thing you're going to configure your database with your what okay before you configure the next thing we're going to import our local database and put it in this database that we've just created okay so to do that we just simply come back to our cpanel and then go to php my admin so this php my admin is where we'll have our different kind of database okay have a little databases here i'm not supposed to show you these things okay so go ahead and search for the database that you just created which is this one okay then we're going to import our local database and then drop it here okay so what you do you go to your local database is under localhost stroke php admin just go to your php admin and then look for your database okay the one that you're using for my case it is this is vector track so this is the local database this is local php admin the one that we've been using for practicing and developing like an empty this uh what i can empty these um uh, a logs operation logs so after doing that then i'm going to export this inventor track database okay so after making sure that you've clicked on it you click on export so when you click on export you go ahead and say export it will process and then they give you the file okay so this is the file which has my basic information that i was using for the what for the local host so I'm going to drag and drop this database into our database that we want to import. So I'll come here to phpmadmin that is online, the one that is online. This is our database. This is the one, the one that we just created, the one database 2, video track 2. So what I do, I just click here and then I drag and drop. However, you can just simply uh, click on import, something like this, and then go ahead and select the file and then it will import. However, if you have ability to drag and drop, just go to where that file is, just drag and drop. After making sure that you have clicked on the right database, drag and drop. So it will process. And then if you click here now, if you show success, you'll see all your tables has been, have been imported. Okay. So that's how you import uh, your database uh, from localhost uh, to the online. So after you've imported your database, the next thing that you're going to do, we are now going to connect this database with our what? With our project. Okay, so to connect your database with the project, what you do, you come to uh, the project, this one here. Okay, then go to the uh, the project itself, all right, and then come here to .inv, okay, and then say right click and then say edit. So in this .inv, it's where we're going to again connect the database, okay. So you get the database name. So if it's vector the other database name, you put it here. The database user that you created, the username, you put it here. And then the database password, you put it here that you added on that database. If you have forgotten them, of course, you can reset the, the password by just simply coming to my S, going to your database, then, I mean, go to your, to your C panel, and then click on uh, my SQL database, not on wizard, my SQL database. You'll be able to see the databases and their users so click on the user and then reset the new password if you have forgotten the new password so that is how you configure so here there are other configurations 
So they are the most important database name, database user, and then the password. So there are other configurations such as test setting the the timestamp, setting the mailer, all those things you can be able to do it to add them here. I mean you can use to for configuring and put them here. So our project is under local and then the environment is local. I mean we can make it production and then after and then after you can make it debug so and when it is out of debug then you can make it under production something like this okay so and make the debug to be true for now when you're still testing so you can you should be able to see errors so after doing that go ahead and save your file so there you'll have configured your database with your project now you come and try to do what and come and try to log in so at this point your project at least should be working okay at least your project should be working if it doesn't work please don't give up just keep on searching on different solutions until it is successfully deployed it can take you two hours it can take you three hours it can take you a full day it can take you two days it can take you one week to deploy your project but don't give up because that's the whole point that you will learn how to deploy this project and once you learn you'll have this knowledge forever no one will ever take that knowledge from you so even if it takes you like one week, but if you if you just give up, then it means that you'll not learn. Okay? It means that you'll not learn. You will have stopped and then even the week passes, still you'll be that ignorant that something that you'd have learned, still you'll not have learned it. So be resilient, be strong, don't just give up. Because these things are not magic, as I can show you, as I've been showing you step by step that were able to to do things step by step until we see that now our project is even online you can see this project is online i've not done something that is magic or what it's just teaching you i'm just teaching you how things are done that we didn't know so if you're really really stuck that you can you have totally failed to move like you've tried three days still you failed to deploy your project then you can contact me my whatsapp is always in the description of the videos and I help you but the whole point is don't give up so you can see my project is here okay so after doing that uh, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, to do what is uh, to uh, to make sure that okay to, to set your Laravel admin is to set your Laravel admin uh, configuration uh, for example, one thing that is that is very important if your project is using HTTPS, and if you if your project is using HTTPS, then you have to be very careful. Here you put HTTPS in the .in, and then in Laravel admin you also have to specify that how it is HTTPS project. So to do that, just come to our project files, okay, and then click here on app, and then come here to uh, uh sorry. Click here on config and then you see admin.php. So right click and say edit. So here put the, the project name, put whatever, so you can put all the information that you want. But the most important part that I want to show you is uh, here. You can search for HTTPS. This one here. Okay. Here. Admin underscore HTTPS. So if you're using HTTPS, make this one to true. If you're not using HTTPS, make this one to false. Okay? So it is very important. Otherwise, you'll be getting an error of sessions when you're trying to log in. Okay? Then go ahead and save. All right. So now after doing that, at least you should be at this point. So let me go ahead and try to log in. So Inveto, sorry, uh, company admin to... And then password one two three four and then i click on login so after you've imported the database and everything uh you should be able to see something that is behaving okay so it has failed i click on i put the correct password for three two one ah you can see success so my project is online that is all that you need to deploy your project so imagine now you have this knowledge of creating anything in dashboard means that you can now start turning your ideas 
into real world what into real world project because that's all what it's needed to do what to deploy your projects and you can see we have gone through this step by step together and reached this point of creating what a project that's all that is all uh, i don't know whether i have left any trick that i have not showed you or i've not explained to you uh you can try to rewatch the video if you're stuck or you can contact me if you're totally 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 stuck okay so ah uh, that's all uh then the next thing is uh now how to do what how let us test our api our api was working offline can you try to test online and see if our api will remain still working so i'm going to go to our postman and then you try to test our api our api we are testing it on localhost is it working online so we proceed with our mobile application let's go to our what to our to our postman Okay, it's our postman. So I'm going just to come to environment and I'm going to create the second environment so that I should not keep on changing things manually. So I'm just going to create another environment for Inverter Track. I can just right click on this one and duplicate it. So I'll be just switching. So let me rename this one and I call this one remote or you can call it online remote. So this one is for the local, the environment of local, this one the environment of what? Of online. So if I want to switch to online, I just come and click here. So let's just update the variables. So now the URL of online, I have not put the URL of the project where it is online. So I'll come here to inverter track and I copy it. If I'm using HTTPS, I do so. If I'm using HTTP, I just use HTTP. All right, so so I enable this one online like this, and then I come here and I just paste. So I make sure that I remain with the same structure. See, our API is stroke API. So I just remove this one, the local uh, IP, and I just paste that one of online. You see, and I remain with the same structure, stroke API. So this is just the online version. Okay. Then I can just come here and replace also this one with the same thing. So since it's the same database, same users, I'm not deleted too much things. I can just use the same for practicing. Okay. So let's try to go ahead. So I've put this one online and I've said to be active. All right. Let's try to go and try to log in someone. So if I move my mouse here, you'll see it is going to send this information to what? To the system that I've just deployed. So let's try. Bismillah. You see that is so beautiful i hope you can see that it has successfully uh logged in someone it can successfully got this information from internet and send us back the information that is so beautiful okay let's try to upload <laughs> i don't know the upload will work let's try to upload an image and see if the image will go online so i'll come here to uh image uploading let's try uh, select a file all right let's just select this one okay so we want to try uploading a file Submit. You see, successful. Can you try to see if this file was really? It really went there. So we come to our what? Our public. Our public storage. Our public folder. Stock storage. Images. You see, if I search the file, the, the image is there. You see, 
that is so nice let's let me see if it can be accessed because that's another issue so it is storage stroke images stroke boom you see that is so beautiful you see i can be able to access this uh, file online the one that we just upload through our api so everything is working perfectly everything is working what perfectly everything is working perfectly and that is very very nice however if yours are not working perfectly still just don't give up try 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 and make sure that they should work so that's enough test to show that our api is working that is enough test to show that our api is working now we are ready to do what to get started with our what with our mobile application okay that is so nice okay now we are ready to get started with our mobile application okay unauthenticated okay maybe the user is not there all right so that is good uh let's get started with the mobile application so uh the whole point is make sure that uh you, you don't give up that's all i can tell you and just push push so hard and make sure that you're at this level because these things are not what are not magic so in the next lecture we're going to begin with our what with our mobile application now we see how we can connect now this with a mobile application we're able to create a mobile application that is corresponding uh, that is communicating with a database that is online that we've just created right now okay so we we'll meet in the next lecture we're going to get started with the what with mobile app see you